probably can't see it from the camera here. I have uh, quite a few of these things all over. What is going on guys? Josh here, Rise Above Health, back with another video today about uh, Milano Tan and Milano Tan 2. Now, Milano Tan is alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone uh, mimetic. Now, basically what that means is bioidentical to alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone, uh, which is known as a melanotropin. Essentially, basically, it leads to the increased production of melanin uh, throughout the body. Well-known substance in the bodybuilding community. We use it prior to shows to darken up. Also, tanning enthusiasts are known to use it. Generally comes in an oral or an injectable form. And today's video is going to be about why I decided not to use Milano Tan and Milano Tan 2 for a tan. This might be information that's of interest to those who are like me, have fair skin and uh, burn easily or whatever, um, you know, have a lot of moles, etc. So um, let's get into it. So uh, let me just share my screen here when I cover my notes. So again, um, melanotan, drug that mimics alpha melanocyte, stimulating hormone, uh, drives melanogenesis, which gives skin pigmentation. Uh, now the drug in particular, this melanotan one and two, melanotan two is very popular, acts as a non-selective agonist of uh, melanocortin receptors one, three, four, and five. Melanocortin receptor one is one of the key receptors thought to regulate skin color and hair color. And interestingly, melanocortin-4 uh, gene mutations are thought to be associated with obesity and increased BMI. So now for reference on what exactly it looks like when somebody takes melanotan, I got here a reference image, and you guys may recognize uh, this individual. So this is uh, Derek from More Plates, More Dates. And here you can see uh, Derek uh, tried out, I believe, injectable melanotan. And uh, you can see here, here's before image obviously uh, looking yoked over here. But uh, so here's the before Derek tried the injectable melanotan and uh, here's the reference for the results. So this is kind of the effect uh, that it can have. It's been found to be a potential treatment for uh, male and female sexual dysfunction, like uh, erectile dysfunction, hypoactive sexual desire disorder. People who buy compounds online, uh, frequently use it for that purpose, uh, particularly its activity, I believe, at the uh, the melanocortin-4 receptor, uh, I, I believe. So um, again, you know, it, there's a lot of uh, interesting effects that are potentially associated with melanotan. Um, in rat models, it's shown to induce brain-derived nootropic factor, which if you've seen some of my videos on the effects of exercise on the brain, you'll be familiar with brain-derived nootropic factor or BDNF. Basically, that uh, BDNF uh, basically uh, leads to the creation of new neurons, which can extend the longevity and, let's say, overall health of your brain, the ability to retain information, remember things, um, you know, stay motivated, etc. So BDNF upregulation in rats uh, and also cognitive recovery in an animal model, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, MC4 receptor antagonists. Um, So, so given the amazing results you see here, and there are many such examples of this online, why did I decide not to pursue using melanotan? And I'm going to tell you. So um, essentially, as you can see here, I'm, I'm going to get up real close here. Um, so I'm pretty pale, um, even though the, the, the light may be changing a bit here. I'm pretty pale, and actually, I've got a lot of moles you guys can see here. Uh, so I've got these moles, right? Uh, benign moles. And, you know, a lot of people have these. People have them in varying amounts that do have them between... Uh, sorry, the mic. People have these moles in varying amounts between, uh, let's say, uh, 10, anywhere up to 600. And obviously, the more you have, uh, the more closely you have to monitor yourself because uh, those with... A, excessive uv exposure potentially those benign moles can turn malignant or uh, cancerous so uh, you have to be very careful when you're uh, very fair skinned you burn easily and you have a lot of moles because that can uh, lead you on the path to uh, melanoma so 
Now, why does that matter with melanotan? So for me, uh, in spite of all these interesting benefits, um, I actually uh, read into the research and I found some interesting stuff. And I'm just going to review these with you. Um, now, in terms of the overall research, uh, seems to be pretty safe. Just, you know, from my anecdotal reading of the literature, um, some interesting effects. You know, like I said, it can have positive effects on libido. Um, there were a couple of cases where people could, you know, had a, <laughs> let's say in rat and human models, uh, had a hard time, let's say, getting rid of the erection, which could be a good thing, depending on who you ask. Uh, but uh, the things, what really stood out to me, besides all these interesting potential benefits that haven't re really been tested in humans, mostly in rat models, um, and anecdotal benefits, uh, I found a bunch of uh, what are called case reports uh, of people who tried melanotan and ended up with melanocytic uh, moles, lesions, and uh, basically what's, what's known as eruptive nevi. So basically, you get a huge explosion of moles. Uh, and potentially, they can turn uh, malignant and or precancerous or cancerous. So um, so basically, just real quick, a case study or a case report, it's an isolated report of uh, what's occurred with an individual. So, um, you know, I wouldn't say it's anecdotal, but if you have uh, um, several case reports, it may not be indicative of what happens in an overall population, but it's something that's important to note. So it really depends on the drug, uh, how much research has been done, and let's say the quality of the research that's been done and then how many case reports there are. So uh, melanotan, there's not really been that many widespread studies for the purpose of tanning. So there's not a lot, there's not a huge amount of quality evidence to say like, yay or nay, this is safe for long-term use, or you know, uh, here are the potential side effects experienced in a large population, et cetera. But so, um, you know, I had, to, I had to go off the information that was available. And so I found these studies now. Uh, there's like four case reports here. And uh, to my mind, you know, I was like, this is experimental for me. It's not necessary. Obviously, it's purely cosmetic. Uh, let's say in upgrading my appearance. You can see here changes of melanocytic lesions induced by melanotan injections in a patient, in a teenage patient. A 16-year-old girl with general skin tanning developed multiple dark melanocytic nevi and an enlarging nevus in her left groin following self-injections of Milano Tan 2 and a UV tanning studio. So combined with both. GP was concerned that the darkened nevi were potentially malignant. So uh, she'd been injecting with subcutaneous half a milligram of Milano Tan 2 daily over two months. And during that time had been attending uh, a solarium or, you know, tanning bed two to three times weekly. So obviously that's a lot of uh, tanning going on. Plus the Milano Tan. She, was really going gung-ho here. After she went to the doctor, they found a, a mole on her left groin that had been getting darker and enlarging. And just so you guys are aware, anytime you have dark moles uh, or a mole is getting darker, uh, typically, let's say a warning sign, and it's something you might want to get checked out. So if you see moles with like uh, that are darker than normal or have you know like abnormally defined edges, don't have a particular shape, um, and they kind of bleed into the rest of your skin, that's... Uh, you know, potentially a sign of malignant uh, tumor. You know, I'm not I'm not a dermatologist, so you know I'm not familiar with all of the terms. But essentially, you know, you have nice, well round, uh, defined edges, sort of a light brown color. It's nice and round, flat. That's sort of a benign mole. But if it's uh, sort of uh, unevenly colored or dark, has weird, ill-defined edges, big or is you know, and also like raised, you know, that's a something you want to get checked out by a dermatologist right away. This person either had or was diagnosed with, with familial atypical mole and malignant, malignant melanoma syndrome. So, uh, so they took a, a, a biopsy. The lesion was diagnosed as dysplastic compound nevus. So here you can see uh, there's a really dark mole on her thigh here. Uh, they, you know, you can see the edges are a little ill-defined but uh, uh, was uh, and eventually diagnosed as, uh, <laughs> I don't want to get too graphic here, but diagnosed as an abnormal uh, malignant mole. So, so basically what happened, she stopped the injections, uh, kept, going to the, kept going to the tanning bed. Uh, on examination, on re-examination, the patient's skin was much paler 
the mall said lightened in color. So basically two months after the injections uh, ceased, the generalized tanning color of her skin diminished. The mole she had became paler and uh, appeared to regress from a malignant to a more benign state. So that's interesting. Now, the other case reports similar type of thing. So in this in this one, a 40-year-old white man, history of melanoma and multiple dysplastic nevi, self-administered uh, synthetic alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone. He developed new pigmented nevi many of which had atypical clinical histopathologic features. The pre-existing moles he had became darker and acquired growth features. After alpha MSH or melanotan use was discontinued, the nevi progressively lightened and lost their growth features. So, you know, you got two cases, two different ages, uh, different genders, different genetics, different habits, etc. cetera. Um, you know, both experiencing a darkening of their holes, uh, becoming potentially precancerous. Finally, we here we have another case report with a 40-year-old woman, 42-year-old white woman with a suspicious enlargement and change in pigmentary nevus on the abdomen. Uh, so there you go. Abnormal shape, dark, uh, ill-defined edges, etc. She also noted significant tanning. The changes appeared progressively over a three-month period after subcutaneous injections of melanotan 2, and she seemed to have been injecting huge amounts, so 100 milligrams daily for two days, followed by 50 milligrams daily for five days. I don't, I don't know, but I think that's huge uh, compared to 0.5 in the 16-year-old. New nevi appeared, another pre-existing nevi presented enlargement or darkening, so very much in line with the other case reports. She developed nausea and stopped injecting. Importantly, she had no hereditary history of melanoma or other cancers, uh, did experience sunburns in her youth. So the legion was excised or removed and histology revealed a melanoma. What does all this mean? So generally speaking, uh, you know, a lot of people have anecdotally used melanotan. It's very popular in the bodybuilding space. Um, also, um, you know, for, for people who are just like myself interested in getting a nice tan. But uh, that being said, it seems that anecdotally or and in case reports, um, people who have a lot of moles should uh, definitely reconsider trying out melanotan. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, as you can see, when, when these four different cases, in these four different cases, different genders, different backgrounds, mostly all white folks. Um, and uh, I... Yeah, in recent years, I actually picked up. There was a period where I was spending more time outside. I was trying to raise my vitamin D levels, and I picked ended up picking up even more moles. Um, and so, just out of an abundance of caution, I basically decided that I wasn't going to pursue Milana tan use for uh, the purpose of getting a tan. Uh, I think I'll probably end up going with uh, trying out a spray tan. Uh, I know it's probably not going to look as natural, but. Uh, Hey, you know, for some of my cl complexion and, you know, uh, the amount of moles that I have, uh, I think it's probably a safer bet than, uh, let's say, outright sun frequent sun exposure and or, you know, boosting my levels of melanin uh, through melanocyte stimulating hormone use. Because uh, it seems that if people with my complexion, with uh, the kind of moles that I have, it leads to a darkening and potentially uh, acceleration of malignancy. Uh, in those moles. The cool thing was it seemed like in those case reports, they largely reverted, uh, but it's not something I'm willing to risk for the purposes of getting a tan. So again, I'm going to try out a uh, spray tan and uh, see how that goes. Maybe I'll do like a video if you guys are interested, like before and after experience getting a spray tan. So that's it. Basically, I decided uh, the juice is not worth the squeeze uh, for something that's super not essential. So Anyway, hope that was informative. If you're like me, you have light skin and lots of moles, you'll definitely want to give this a miss. So, uh, so anyway, that's the video. If you guys like this content, be sure to like the video, subscribe, leave a comment. I'm available on IG, rise.above.health, YouTube, subscribe, uh, oh yeah, R IG, rise above, rise.above.health, join the Facebook group, uh, Rise Above Health performance and biohacking for entrepreneurs and uh we out here we ride and then we making content new content all the time so i uh, hope you guys are having a great uh, day and i will catch you in the next video take care guys peace out